Hello, my name is Leah Mija Correa, and I'm presenting with my colleagues, Miriam Blackman, Chase Panzo, Amanda Sardinas, and Ethan Dunn. Our question is, to what extent have prosthetic limbs positively impacted the lives of people between 18 and 35 years old since the beginning of World War II? Prosthetic limbs have had many impacts shown through the history of prosthetics since the beginning of World War II. Mental disorders found on young amputated adults, the engagements of sports by young amputated athletes, um, designs on prosthetics made by other people for aesthetic appeal, and the evolution of prosthetics economically and mechanically. The first leg made to be a mother pattern for many legs was the Verdun leg, which was made by Dutch scientists in the year 1696. It was a simple mechanism with the hinge of the knee joint with a thigh corset. Another prosthetics were made keeping the gait cycle in mind. The gait cycle is a simple swing and stance motion. The muscular mechanical one, you had to change the gait cycle manually, while the microprocessor one does it for you automatically, as shown in the chart. After World War II, pneumatic prosthetics were introduced, which were able to control several different joint and grip types. As time went on, myelectric pros prosthetics were built. This was controlled by electrical signals sent by the muscles. Another type of, uh, another type of prosthetic, which is shown over here, is the flexor prosthetic. The flexor prosthetic stores up energy and releases the stored up energy during the push-off phase. The use of prosthetics have caused depression in a great deal of people. According to psychological effects of amputation or view studies from India, amputation of the limb has been reported to be a significantly stressful event. Many researchers even equate it to the loss of a spouse. This boldly contrasts the death of a loved one to the tragedy that is the amputation of a limb. And I think it would clearly explain why someone would develop depression in the wake of something so terrible. Phantom limb pain is an upsetting syndrome, and it entails painful sensations that come from where the now amputated limb used to reside. The pain is finally real, but the limb is completely gone. A lot of research has gone into the correlation of chronic pain and uh, anxiety and depression, and, it even, and in both male and female, the percentage went up from 7% to 33%. This overall communicates that in developing phantom limb pain, you're increasing your chances of developing an anxiety disorder significantly. And the cause of this is mentioned previously, referring to a traumatic event. The, these mental disorders are almost always found in the beginning stages of amputation, but more research has shown that it can also be found in later stages. On the contrary to the negatives, amputees have found new confidences in prosthetics with the help of two major influencers. The first being Sofia Murata, who has a background in art and, and special effects makeup, as well as working in a prosthetics company before starting her own company called The Ultimate Limb Project. Their company focuses on connecting functionality and aesthetic appeal together, with their limbs varying from hyper-realistic over here to more unorthodox ones, which can have lights, moving parts, or secret compartments. One of her major buyers and model for her company is singer and model Victoria Modesta, who uses her amputated leg to promote herself and her music, as well as uses various prosthetics to boost her confidence and self-esteem as a performer and a person in general. Both of these people have played key roles in introducing more aesthetically appealing limbs into play, as well as giving amputees people to look up to and so that there is ways of variety and self-expression in prosthetics. Going forward, ideas of self-attractiveness has also been a lingering question for amputees. According to the article of the aesthetic appeal of prosthetic limbs in the Uncanny Valley, this graph is the result of an experiment they performed showing the correlation between uh, uh, human attractiveness, human similarity, and visual attractiveness, with the low end being more artificial looking limbs to the high end being more human-like limbs, with this area here being an outlier, so that there's also a high attractiveness to prosthetics using metallic materials and have medium levels of human similarity. Overall, 
All of these factors sort of show how aesthetic appeal and art integration are just the beginning of an art and prosthetics collaboration in the future. In addition, it is not impossible for amputees to re-engage into their desired sport. In fact, 61% of Americans return back to sport following the amputation, and 11 to 39% of Europeans return back to sports following an amputation. One of these reasons is because sports enhancements to prosthetics have made it easier for athletes to re-engage into their sport. Take, for example, the J-form prosthetic. A Paralympic athlete can run at the same speed as able-bodied sprinters using 25% less oxygen due to the prosthesis energy return. The carbon fiber blades produce three times more energy return than a human ankle. Okay. The J-form prosthetic allows for amputee athletes to replicate the motions of an able-bodied sprinter and work just as effectively. Sports performance has also, also been shown to improve as a result of using a prosthetic. The graph indicates among these three groups, active, inactive, and able-bodied athletes, hip extension and <coughs> flexion strength, with graph A indicating hip extension strength and graph B indicating hip flexion extent, hip flexion strength. Comparing these three groups, it is clear to see that in some instances they are even better than able bodied athletes shown in graph B with hip extension. This overall <coughs> reflects an increased functionality and mobility. Nowadays, people can 3D print their own prosthetic limb in their own home for about $50 per material. Their, account, their alternative counterparts usually cost anywhere from four thousand U.S. dollars to twenty thousand U.S. dollars. So they, so all they have to do is look up a three D design, such as the one that's shown here. Three D print it to where it would end up like this for about twenty point twenty five percent to 1.25% of the cost that it would have been. They can also create, add their own changes to it and their own functions that they want. An SEMG device is a small device that can be put in an arm bed under a prosthetic. The device will pick up on any signals sent from the brain to, through the nerves to a muscle to cause movement. This is currently the prime, according to a group of researchers, this is currently the primary <coughs> method of control for many prosthetic hands due to it, due to the ease that it creates and also the intuitive. Where there, while there are still drawbacks to, to prosthetics, the evidence shows that, there, that prosthetic limbs have overall, has overall benefited the lives of amputees, such as allowing for them to re-engage in their various sports, allowing that community to have new artistic appeals, and also being economically accessible. Thank you, is there any questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question for each of you. Why don't you stay up there, you'll get the first question. Uh, first question then, Ethan, for you is, <clears throat> describe how the content of the team presentation changed as a result of you guys talking about it. Um, it's changed a whole lot individually, but, um, such as I was going to do it with many more kinds of models, and I ended up not doing it like that. And also, there was going to be more examples given by Mary Blackman, but because of time and because they really didn't move the primary plane. All right, good, thank you. All right, Valerie. Um, in the future, what change would you make to your group norms and how would you expect that to improve your presentation? In the future, the change that we would make in our group norms would probably be better communication, 
because let's say sometimes we couldn't practice our presentation at the school due to either chases after school practices on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and Ethan practicing every day after school for a sports engagement. But um, better communication is something that I would fix in the group norms due to those problems. All right, cool, thank you. Miriam, uh, in what way did you improve your ability to work with a group as a result of this project? I improved my ability to work with my group because we were able to work through limitations such as when Valeria had a family emergency, we, we figured out how to still communicate with her and practice. Chase, what's an example of a compelling argument from one of their reports that you decided not to keep in the presentation? One of the parts that we decided not to keep in the presentation was Valeria's part on abdominal prosthetics, which helped them with their bowel movements and such. And we decided to keep it out because it wasn't relevant because we focused on mostly limbs and that wasn't much of a limb. So we decided to keep that out of the presentation and keep it more focused on limbs in general. All right, thank you. Amanda, uh, what was the strongest counter argument to your conclusion that your team identified? Our strongest counter argument was Miriam's um, information on the negative impacts that prosthetics could have on amputees because our solution focused more on how the positive effects have helped amputees improve their daily lives. 